Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. It's really great to be here and I am so ha super happy you joined our session today where we are going to talk a little bit more about disrupting healthcare and training with a lot of focus, like I said, on healthcare and uh, specifically talk about how VR, but VR with eye tracking is, uh, is making that change. Um, and Robert is also gonna talk a little bit after I give an introduction. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what customers are doing, share a few success stories, and then he's gonna talk a little bit more about how they're doing it and the different types of tools. So I have been working in the eye tracking industry for 13 years. And uh, the last eight of those years, I've been working with VR with eye tracking. And it's, uh, it's been a very interesting journey to watch both of these technologies kind of side by side. The way VR has been growing and changing the last few decades, moving from research labs and only being used in government and military situations and researchers. Eye tracking had the same story, so kind of started out several de a couple decades ago, mostly in research. Um, but now, the last few years, like I said, eight, it's been eight, nine, ten, something like that. Um, you, the first commercially available headset with both eye tracking and VR is available. And as you can imagine, <laughs> those eight years, it has also grown quite a bit. And so now we're at the point where the convergence of the technology, the eye tracking with the VR, is um, to the point where it's really able to make quite a difference, uh, not just for gaming and fun and applications. Actually, I really apologize. I should ask now that we have some more people in the room. How many people are familiar with eye tracking? OK, good, good, good. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure before we got to, because we're kind of jumping right in. Uh, very quickly, for those that aren't familiar with eye tracking, it's a sensor technology, a lot of VR OEMs embed into the devices, uh, mostly because it helps improve the performance of the device, but also helps uh, improve the experience for the user. Um, so anyway, stepping back into what I was saying, um, so now the convergence of the technology, the advancements have really allowed to open up the doors, especially in healthcare, for so many new amazing use cases. And like I said, I've been in this industry for quite some time now, and I have the opportunity to work with a lot of these fantastic companies that you see here uh, building these different types of tools and devices. So like I said, I want to share a few of their success stories, but I also am going to share a few observations that I have had along the way. So if we kind of bounce back to that other slide about how the companies are now able to leverage and harness the power of these two technologies converged and combined um, to redefine what is possible. And if we look at it a little bit deeper, and I could, I could probably talk about all of these different areas uh, for a very long time, uh, but in the interest of time, I'll quickly walk through a few of these and I'll show you a few examples as well. But for instance, we already know that uh, VR is used quite a bit with uh, inpatient care nowadays. It's definitely growing, especially the last few years after the pandemic, finding more and more digital healthcare solutions out there. Um, we also see the expansion in training and simulation and we see how eye tracking specifically in VR is helping improve and understand more about how trainees or people that are going through different training situations actually make decisions, what they attend to, what they look at. So it's enhancing the ability to understand more about the trainee or even experts, people that are going through more training, what they're actually looking at, what they ignore as they perform certain tasks. Um, therapy, rehabilitation, it actually gamifies it a little bit, makes it a little bit more exciting. Um, vision care, I'll talk about that a little bit more and how it's improving, uh, actually democratizing vision care a little bit more by being able to have an eye tracking device into a small VR headset. 
And workplace safety, this is a very interesting one. Actually, we had a presentation earlier today where we talked a little bit more about how you can actually understand more about uh, a human's uh, situation. So whether or not um, they could be impaired, I guess, uh, uh, under the influence of drug or alcohol. So that's one type of impairment, but also understanding if there are some types of cognitive or neurological impairments as well. Um, so if you didn't catch that, I recommend uh, watching the video for that uh, session earlier that was Toby with uh, our partner Gaze. But if we hop in a little bit more and actually look at a few of those things I just said, so perfect segue, important uh, that eye tracking is really improving and a lot of these um, different types of tests they rely on the eye tracking data specifically. Um, so we kind of very briefly talked about how eye tracking can be used as an input tool to improve the device or to improve the user experience. But you can actually output the data as well. So you can output the different types of eye movements. So what direction the eyes are in, if one skew, what they're actually, if they're converging, if they're looking together. You can also extract data about different eye features, um, blinks, pupil data, which is very interesting when you're trying to understand more about a human's brain. And that's simply because the eye and the brain have this great connection, unlike other parts of the body. And I'm sure maybe you've heard it before. People say the eyes are a window into the brain. And it is very true. So by being able to measure different types of eye movements, or sometimes more importantly, abnormalities in eye movements, you can actually detect certain types of diseases. So the eye movements can be a predictor or a biomarker. And this is probably the most fascinating part of what I do, at least for me and my job. And um, here's a few examples here. But if you look at, like, for instance, how somebody is fixating or looking at a different, uh, at a specific uh, scene in a VR, looking at how a typical person would look at that and looking at the data of somebody that may have a neurocognitive or some type of issue will help a physician kind of glean in and maybe detect and get to a diagnosis for something like Alzheimer's or potentially even Parkinson's sooner, which is huge. The sooner you can actually detect that type of stuff, um, obviously the sooner you can prevent and improve the person's quality of life. So for me, a lot of this stuff is actually quite uh, life-changing in, in some respects. So I really enjoy working with some of our partners. So I, like I said, I'm going to share a few success stories. Um, this is a company, Neurosync. You might have heard of them as SyncThink. They rebranded about a year ago. But they have been around the block for a long time. They're actually spun out of Stanford. They've worked with the military, but they also work with, actually, they have an exclusive partnership with the XFL. Um, but also a number of other different uh, professional sports and amateur sports organizations. And if this fall you are watching an XFL game and you see a VR headset on the sideline, they're not playing a game. They're probably actually detecting or trying to understand if the person is suffering from a traumatic brain injury like a concussion. Um, so this is, uh, they have a platform that can measure uh, by monitoring the eyes. You kind of see some output here of the different data and be able to give that information to a clinician so that they can make a more objective test. So you think about like the follow my eye or the pupil dilation test. It's pretty much just like that, only digitized and objective in a VR device. Uh, actually, if we switch and go East Coast, similar company, also looking at brain health, but uh, focused a little bit more on other uh, neurocognitive diseases, so again, going back to like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, neurodegenerative. Um, this is a company called React, React Neuro, and their goal is to build like the Fitbit for the brain. So we have all these devices that tell us so much about our heart, and their goal is to build something that tells us more about our brain. So again, we can be proactive uh, in our healthcare choices, um, but also, they also have tools, it's actually, we've got a few case studies, it's, it's very heartwarming where they're actually providing these in senior facilities. So 
seniors are going through different types of cognitive tests and things like that to keep their brains healthy and fit, but also gives um, their healthcare providers a little bit more information about us, what is going on with their brain. We actually have a demo of this in our meeting room, and we are having an open house tonight at 5 o'clock, room 201 up the escalator. If you want to come by and actually test this and test a few more of these that I'm going to talk about in a second. Is that yeah. the time? Yeah. Holy moly. Okay, I'm talking too much. i got to really speed it up. So again, like I said, I could talk about that all day. Come see me at 5 o'clock, and we'll talk about it some more. So very quickly, getting into training and education. Again, going back to that ability to provide real-time objective feedback and also provide adaptive training. So same thing. These folks can use the output coming uh, from the eye tracking in the VR devices as people are in a simulation. Uh, but not to necessarily tell you about their neurocognitive, but tell you about how they're attending to or visualizing or, or looking at data. So we have a partner that does that in pilot training, which is very similar in, in many cases to surgery. We use a lot of pilot training because it's been in the market for so long. We have so many great partners. Um, but so they use the technology to train pilots faster, quicker, more efficiently. Also, we have a partner, VTR, which is also in pilot training, but they do something a little bit more unique. Um, not only is it analyzing how the eyes and where the eyes are moving, but they build the eye tracking into the application as like a confirmation or validation that the um, pilot, when they're going through the training, is actually looking at the gauge. Um, you know, obviously flying a plane, there's so many dials and pieces of information that you constantly have to be checking. And um, there's certain procedures, obviously, when you're taking off or landing in a plane and you have to follow. It's a very visual task. So what they do, instead of as you're moving from task to task or thing to thing that you're supposed to do, which normally to advance, you might have to use you know, your voice to say, you know, go to the next procedure or click something, a controller. Instead, it knows you look there. It automatically moves you through the procedure, making it much more naturalistic and making it um, so you don't break the flow of the training as they're going through the process. So we also have a demo of this. It's really powerful. We also have a demo with hand tracking, which is pretty cool with this one. So highly recommend you come try this uh, tonight as well if you can. And then lastly, before I hand it over to Robert, again, going back to um, how, I think I mentioned it earlier, but how it can actually democratize and replace some of the old machines that you may be familiar with, especially if you go to optometrists or ophthalmologists, um, like that one there up in the corner. So it's taking these big machines that cost thousands or millions of dollars and very, you know, not only expensive, they take up space, they require very special training to, to even use or understand or turn them on. And in many cases, you can replicate the same tests that you're doing in those big giant machines in a VR headset with eye tracking, which is crazy. So it allows it, obviously, not just affordability, but now you have scalability, you have accessibility. So people that maybe can't come into a clinic, they can, uh, you know, you, there, there are shipping today devices to people's homes where they can do these types of tests. And this is an example right here. We have a great partner, All Eyes. And they have been able to replicate, I think it's 70% or maybe even higher now, it might be even be higher now, of the tests that you do in those larger ophthalmology devices into a VR headset. And so they are out there now selling these to different clinics. They're working with um, a number of different uh, insurance groups and things like that to help, again, spread healthcare, make it more accessible to people, even like remote places, things like that. But then also, you add the patient monitoring side to things. So you can actually have these in people's homes. Not only can they do treatment and therapy, you can constantly monitor or understand how they're improving their eye conditions. So even if they are coming into the clinic before they get there, you know something more about how they're doing in their condition, which I think is pretty phenomenal. So like I said, this is my, this is my life. So I am so happy to talk about these things. Find me later if these things are very interesting to you. I'm happy to connect you with any of these partners. Mm. But like I said, I promise I want Robert to talk a little bit more about how these guys are actually doing this, uh, the different types of tools that they're using to extract that type of data. So Robert. Thank you. 
<coughs> Hope you hear me well. So um, I'm Robert Malmström. I'm the product manager of Toby Ockerman. Uh, I've been working at Toby for about seven years. And one of the most common questions I get is, what is Toby Ockerman? Where does it fit into a whole VR eye tracking system? So in the base, you have the VR headset with the, uh, with the sensor data, the raw sensor data. And it, it's not much you can do with that. So on top of that, we have the Toby XR SDK. So that takes the raw signals and creates eye tracking signals and um, standard signals that you can use for combined gaze or blink and, and stuff like that. Uh, but to do a little bit more advanced things, we have created what we call Toby Okiman. So Toby Okiman is a uh, SDK and software tools that takes these signals from the XR SDK, those standard signals, and it adds more advanced signals and also a lot of filters that you can lose, use to get uh, saccades and fixations and stuff like that. And then on the top of this pyramid, you have our great partners, our ISV uh, customers, that create some of the products that Amanda has been talking about today. Um, so this is a mental image of what Toby Ockerman, how it fits into a whole system. And why did we create Toby Ockerman? So back in 2017, when Toby released our first uh, VR uh, dev kit with eye tracking, uh, we already have the possibility to add these more advanced signals and filters, but there, this was so early with, with the, uh, eye tracking in VR, so there were basically no demand for these more advanced signals. But we, we could see at Toby already then that there was some real potential for these to be used in some very important um, functionalities and problems in the future. So that's why we started working on Toby Ockerman already back then. And also, why do our customers love to work with Toby Ockerman? So one of the reasons that they love to work with, with Toby Ockerman is our, uh, well, uh, our proven and well-documented filters that we have. So I would like to talk a little bit about that, how you can find more information on, about Toby's filters. So you don't have to read all this, but this is an example of one of the filters, one of the saccades filters that we have. So you can see it explains exactly how it works, like it calculates angular gaze velocity, find peaks in velocity point and output, and so on. And you can also see some more explanation of how it can be used. You have a reference to the research, and you can also find uh, code examples in here. And you can find much more than you see on this page. So this is a good start to go to Toby Developer Zone. And some of the more important uh, features that we have is uh, what we call user position guide. So as I've been working at Tobocumen for many years, I've been responsible for a lot of huge data collections. And then we collect thousands of people. So we randomly select them, basically taking people from the street, put the headset on them. And I think you all here would be surprised how many people that put the headset on completely wrong. So one point with user position guide is that we have a signal that can tell you how well they should see the image and how well we, we are able to track them. So what this means is that you can have a, a person that you ask, uh, how are your visual, how, how is the visual quality? And, and you would be surprised how many who said, yes, I have a very good quality, but if you look at those signals, they obviously don't have that. So that means that, you will, that the user will have a very bad experience using the headset, and you will also get quite poor quality data. So the user position guide that we have in Ocuman is an API that you can use to seamlessly integrate this functionality into your application um, to improve the performance of the, of the data you have collected. And also, we have eye tracking calibration API in Toby Ocuman that you can also fully integrate into your application. And one of the features with this is that with every headset, there comes a calibration tool, but you have to guide the user back to some system menu, run the calibration, get out of that application, and then uh, get them back into your application. And, and I usually call that what do you see now situation, where you, you have to guide the user, what do you see now, can you please go there, now go back to our application. It's, it's, it's just a bad experience for everybody. So with Toby Okiman, you can add that functionality inside of your application, like a natural step that takes maybe 10 seconds. And what's also important with 
with eye tracking calibration is that you can also see the difference between your left and your right eye, how, how well it was calibrated. And you can also add or remove calibration points. So let's say that you're only interested in central gaze data, that you have good performance there. Then you can actually just have one point calibration that is much faster and, and uh, yeah, good for the user, user experience. So, sorry. Uh, so what is the next step? Um, with Toby Ockerman, as you see, yes. Uh, with Toby Ockerman Studio, we are looking at new functionalities. Uh, and I would love to show them to you today, but it would be better if you come to our demo later today and I can show you a sneak peek of our new functionality uh, for doing more analy analytic work inside of Ockerman Studio. And we also have Toby Focus. Uh, it's a functionality we've been working for a very long time. So it actually called, in the beginning, it's called Gaze to Object Mapping. So I would like to show you a video here. So when you're selecting objects in a complex environment, a complex VR environment, uh, the easiest way is to do just ray casting and then have a collider that is exactly the same size as the object as, that you're looking at. But the problem is that a user that is looking at an object that is maybe changing or moving or some interesting details, you will see that the eye is, is scanning the object. So it's gonna be quite hard to know exactly which object you're looking at. And especially if you have multiple objects uh, in front or back of, of different objects. And one, one improvement you can do that is that you double the size of the collider that you see, like here. And that makes it easy to see if you're looking at the front object. But if you have multiple objects, they're moving in front of each other, they're uh, in the way, it will be super hard to use this, this technology. So instead, we created this Toby gaze object mapping uh, functionality. That is a machine learning uh, layer that we put on top of uh, combined gaze. And we have trained it on a lot of data on people looking at different objects. So we can predict which of these objects in this environment that you're looking at. So if you would like to see a demo of this personally, if you want to run it, you can come to, to our open house after this. Yes. So here are contacts, and you also have the time and the room for uh, where we have this open house. We will have some refreshments. You will, could network, talk to all our teams that are here. So I'd really love to see you there in room 201 second floor at five o'clock. So now we have actually some time for questions. Feel free to come up to the mic. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Uh, full disclosure, I came from Vision Industry before joining ARVR. Uh, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned a number of different applications where eye tracking can be used, especially in the vision care. Do you know, to the best of your knowledge, has there ever, ever been any uh, instrument which is FDA cleared, which uses your, uh, 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 your hardware? Yes, there are several. So the NeuroSync one that I showed, for instance, that is an FDA cleared. Uh, uh, their suite, I guess, of their different applications that is FDA cleared. So is that based on VR? Uh, that headset? is a VR based, yeah. Or have you ever tried uh, uh, promoting your, uh, your solution as a hardware solution, not just on the VR, but on actual medical devices, eye care devices? Um, uh, the reason I'm asking, because you also showed one of the devices, which is uh, Humphrey Field Analyzer. Yes, yes. Uh, so that uses eye tracking. Yes. Uh, so have you ever tried comparing your results with the standard uh, medical hardware? We personally don't, uh, but all of our partners that are, that are actually building the applications, the applications developers that are then the ISVs that are taking it out, yes, they have a slew of research that compares their results to some of the standard uh, equipment that is out there today. I would be happy to point you in the right direction where you can find some of that if that's okay. something you're interested in. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your questions. If we don't have any other questions, thank you, Amanda and Robert. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank you for coming here. Really appreciate it. Hope to see some of you later.